I'm Stephen Miller, and I'm at UC Berkeley. I'll be presenting on the perception for the manipulation of socks. Uh, so a brief introduction. Um, our goal is to enable robotic manipulation of socks. I, in this work, we focus on the perceptual challenges of that, namely how do we get from a single image to some idea of the structure of the sock. So to motivate, uh, here are some of the functionality we'd like to see. Given a robot and a sock, We'd like to be able to determine enough about the structure to pick it up and open it. So you need to know where the ankle is, where the toe is. Detect if it's inside out, and if so, flip it. And finally, we'd like to locate matching socks so we can pair them together. Uh, basically, all the things that a laundry robot would need to pick up socks and work with them. So a little motivation. Uh, we have a pragmatic reason. Uh, we'd like to increase the functionality of our own laundry folding robot, and socks are in a household. Uh, but a little more general, uh, we'd like to enhance the perception of deformable objects. Now, socks are deformable, which makes them fairly difficult to work with. Uh, they have a nearly infinite state space as cloth. They can be bent, wrinkled, inside out, or bunched. And they also have very few salient features on them. Uh, often no single point of the texture is very discriminative. It traces an ambiguous contour, so you can't just look at the shape to figure it out. And the topology is largely hidden from view, so all of our motions are judging by the fact that we have this tubular structure to work with, but we often can't even see the opening or the fact that it's a tubular structure in 3D. So we need to use a priori knowledge about it. Um, some prior work that we've done, uh, parameterized shape models for clothing, we identified ways of uh, detecting the configuration of other articles of clothing. And this used a cloth template to do contour matching. But unfortunately for a sock, the contour alone is insufficient. As you can see from that example, that doesn't tell you where the heel is or where the toe is. Uh, so an outline of our approach. Uh, we're going to start with a single image as an input. We want to output, is it inside out? Something about the basic structure, so the toe, the ankle. And also, we'd like to match it out of a candidate selection of socks. Um, so our approach, we're going to have some strategies that we share throughout all three problems, and then a few unique solutions to each. So now first, the shared strategies. Uh, the need for discriminative features is key in this. And to motivate that, imagine you need to distinguish between an inside-out or right-side-out sock and an inside-out sock. Uh, this is a fairly subtle difference, and on the projector it looks even more subtle, but on the computer it's still quite subtle. Uh, so we're dealing with a patch like this, and we need to be able to tell is this inside out or right side out, and other queries about it. So one texture feature we used are local binary patterns, where you take a 3x3 three three neighborhood around a pixel. Every neighbor is assigned a 1 if the intensity is greater than the center, otherwise a 0. And this yields an 8-bit binary string, which we can make a histogram over to give a full feature. Another feature we considered is MR8, uh, where it computes the Gaussian response, uh, the response of a pool of Gaussians at various rotations. You maximize over the different rotations to get a rotationally symmetric 8-dimensional vector. You'll look up the nearest neighbor in a learned texton dictionary, and then compute a histogram over the textons used. And again, there's more information in the original papers. Um, we'll also use a local shape feature where we take a mask of the patch. Since our socks are on a green background, we assume that we have a mask. And we'll compute a hog descriptor on that to get a local curvature estimate. We'll also use a local color feature, which is a hue histogram with 19 color bins and one grayscale bin. Finally, to actually get information out of these features, we're going to train a support vector machine using an L2 loss function on patch labels. And this follows the standard literature on multi-class uh, SVMs. And we're going to examine various kernels, so linear, polynomial, RBF, or chi-squared. Now some proposed solutions. It's interesting to note that the first two problems of inside-out detection and matching can be solved just with appearance using fairly standard techniques. But predicting the configuration of the sock, local features aren't enough to tell you that. Uh, so we'll need some global structure built in. So for inside-out detection, uh, it's fairly straightforward. We'll extract a global feature over the entire sock. And then we'll train a support vector machine to classify inside-out versus right-side-out socks. 
To solve the sock matching problem, we'll extract features and cluster them into pairs. So there are two approaches. One is greedy, where we compute uh, the nearest neighbors, remove them, and repeat. So we'll take the single nearest neighbors, then repeat this until we have no more. All socks are accounted for. Or we have a more optimal strategy, where we try to find the permutation which minimizes the sum of the distance between matched socks. And this is efficiently solved with Edmund's matching algorithm. But now when we predict the configuration of the sock, uh, we're still going to train individual patch classifiers for various landmarks that we care about, so a heel classifier or a toe classifier or an ankle classifier. But we're going to use the shape model framework to try to enforce overall consistency. So we'll augment this contour-only model with local appearance cues. So a brief recap of the shape models. Um, we define a model, for example, on a shirt. It has a set of parameters, landmark points that give you the structure, and a contour that the model would trace if it were in that configuration. We define some cost function, which says how well the contour fits the observed image. And then we have a framework for numerically optimizing the parameters. Um, I can't go into detail here, but you can refer to the paper to see how that's done. So in the original framework, the contour cost was just the distance between the model and the observed contours. Now we'd like to augment this cost with something about the appearance. Namely, the model will predict the location of a toe or an ankle or various generic patches or a heel, etc. And we would like to take a weighted sum of the classifier responses at those predicted locations and use that to give us some sort of appearance cost that says how well does the appearance match up with what we actually see in the image. The total cost is then going to be a weighted sum of contour and appearance scores. Um, so now a few results. First, a bit about the data set. We have 800 images corresponding to 100 unique pairs of socks in eight con uh, configurations. So the sock will be seen from the side. The heel can be up or down. It can be bunched, and then inside-out versions of each of these. And it's worth noting that our training and test set used entirely distinct socks. So regardless of the configuration, you have never seen the sock that you're testing on before. We have a few ground truth annotations, so we label inside-out socks. Uh, matching pairs have been labeled. And regions are roughly labeled to say if this is an ankle region or a toe region, et cetera, to give some qualitative metric of how well we're doing. And then precise points, which say where the best location of the ankle, toe, or heel would be, are also labeled to give a quantitative metric. So for inside-out detection, we trained on MR8 and LBP features. And as you can see, uh, we received pretty good success rates at 96% at the LBP and chi-squared kernel. And here's an example of the sorts of things that we could detect between inside-out and right-side-out just using this support vector machine. Uh, for sock matching, we considered a number of features. Um, LBP, macro LBP, which is LBP computed on a downscaled image to try to get more broad texture, uh, the color, and the size or the area of the sock. We tried these individually and then we also stacked them together into a single vector with equal weights. And this is the result of training SVMs on that. Um, so as you can see, they all do fairly well, but once you stack all features together, regardless of whether you use the greedy or optimal strategy, you get a 100% success rate across the board. Now for predicting the structure of the sock, uh, we used the stacked LBP and shaped features, and we trained a chi-squared kernel SVM on them. So the side view model we propose has a number of parameters which specify how it can move. And it predicts the location of a toe, an ankle, a heel, and some generic patches where we don't expect to see any of these signals. Similarly, we have a heel up and down model, which has the same parameters, but it predicts a toe, an ankle, and then just generic patches. So we don't assume that we can find the heel because it may be occluded. Finally, for the bunched case, we allow there to be a seam line that will uh, specify where it's folded over. And then our predictions, rather than looking for that seam line, will be that there will be inside-out patches on one half and right-side-out patches on the other. The idea being that in a bunched sock, what's really important is that you have a split between inside-out and right-side-out. And if you could open that up, then you would have uh, unfolded it. 
So a number of baselines we looked at. Uh, we have an appearance-only baseline where the location of these landmark points is determined just by the maximum classifier response. And we also tried the contour-only baseline uh, where the identical models are used but we don't take any appearance score into consideration. So uh, as you can see, uh, the global model performs very well in all cases, uh, particularly in more difficult structures like the heel up, down, or bunched. Uh, when it's more complicated to find the ankle and determine the structure, then the global model vastly improves on the others. Um, it's worth noting especially that neither the contour nor the appearance were sufficient to tell you about a bunched model, uh, what configuration it was in. So it seems that combining these cues together gives, is more powerful than using any individually. And here are some example of uh, successful and failure results. Um, we implemented these into an end-to-end -end robotic system, which I briefly showed before. And this has been sped up for brevity. And then I wanted to show this, there were some less glamorous results of the project too. Um, without audio, it won't mean as much, but maybe I can narrate still. Uh, we had a video go somewhat viral of the robot folding socks uh, for less than glamorous reasons. Um, so uh, this is a popular TV show and uh, they were rating it number one video of the week and then they do a little skit about the robot. But what you're not hearing is the techno music and the commentary and everything else. <laughs> uh, so they did dress up as a robot and chase a man across the stage. So I want to be clear that we are not out to hurt people. In conclusion, we examined local features which are relevant to many sock perception tasks. We trained a global classifier to detect whether the sock was inside out. We present an optimization scheme for matching socks. And we incorporated these into a global model to try to infer the overall structure. And we implemented this on a robotic system. Thank you.